In this unit I'm going to explain the use of design options in Revit. And before we start I just want to explain basically what they are and when and why you would use them and then for the rest of the unit I'll take you through a small demonstration project where we will go ahead and create some design options so I'll show you how that works in practice. So design options are used where you're developing your scheme and you want to look at different aspects of it and you want to consider different permutations so for example this basic office building here we've got no more than a shell at the moment but let's say we wanted to explore different options for a reception area now one option may be a simple rectangular area another option might have a, a curved wall in it that's a, a great use of design options we would set up an option set to look at this reception area and within that option set we would create two or more different options we can then go and create additional option sets to look at other areas of our design so what we're going to do in a minute is have a look also at a small sort of extension to the building here let's say we're not sure how the back of the building would work again we might have a, a rectangular or square extension we might want a semicircular wall here so again we could set up a new option set and we could have different options within there to look at the different permutations we could have. So that's what option sets are used for. If you're at the stage where you've literally got a blank site and you're not sure where your building should be or what shape it should be, op design options aren't really um, best used for that purpose. You're probably best using sort of conceptual mass forms, sort of massing objects. But if you've started to develop an actual design like here, or you might be a little bit further through the design process but you want to look at different layouts and it doesn't just work with walls we could look at different window configurations different roof forms but basically when you've got a, a basic main model to start with and you just want to explore different options for parts of that model then that's when you would use design options So what we need to do first is define our option sets. So to be able to do that, we need to bring up the design options panel. So you need to go to the manage menu and then you'll see a panel design options and on there is a button design options. Hit that and it brings up the panel here. And this is where we can define our option sets and our various options. Just pop that away for a second. The other method to access that, probably a little bit quicker, especially if you're not in that particular manage menu, is if you look at the bottom of the interface, again, there is a button there, that same icon, design options, hit that and it brings up the same panel. So let's go ahead and define our option sets. Now we said we were going to look at two different areas of our scheme. We're going to look at the reception area and how that might work. And we're also going to look at a small extension to the rear of the building. So we need an option set for each of those areas. So new option set, well we've got option set one there. Let's do a, a second one there, option set two. So I'm just gonna highlight option set one, rename it. Let's call that reception. And option set two, let's rename that and call that rear extension. So currently, in each of those two option sets, we just have a single option. So let's go and have at least two options for each of those. So if we go to reception, we want a new option. So we've got option one and option two. And as you develop your options, you again, you may want to rename these to make more, more sense. So sort of rectangular option or semicircular option, um, something that's meaningful for you to understand what each of those options means. So rear extension, again, let's look at two different options. So I hit new, and I'll just leave those with the default name for now. You'll notice for each option set, one of the options has primary in brackets. I'll explain the use of a primary option a little later on in the unit. Okay, so we've defined our option sets, and within each option set, we've got two options. All we need to do now is go and start adding our elements into each of those option sets. So let's start with the reception area. Now the crucial thing to remember when working with design options is to make sure you've got the correct design option in the correct option set selected 
when you're adding elements to that area. There's two ways of selecting those options. You can either go back to manage and you'll see there on that design options there is a little drop down and from there you can pick which area you're working on. If you select main model that's everything except the design options that you've defined so you could go on sort of developing the main part of the scheme. If you want to work in the reception area on option one just select that and the model will grey out and you can start defining that first option. So you can select where you're working up here on the ribbon menu. You can also select it in that little um, drop down at the bottom of the interface. That's a much easier place to define it because you will be swapping backwards and forwards between different options. So let's say for example I'm in the architecture menu where I've got access to all my walls, doors, windows etc. I can still click down here and change which option I'm working in. So let's go ahead and look at option one for the reception area. So let's go ahead and create our first design, our first option. So let's choose a wall type and go with a very simple rectangular entrance area, reception area. Just add a door in. Now, obviously you can make this as, as detailed as you like. You could add a furniture layout in there. You can also use design options just for different furniture layouts to, to look at the effect of that. Um, so there is our first option. Let's go ahead and look at another option for the entrance area. So select option two. Notice how we still have the main model grayed out option one is filtered out we can't see that we've got a blank canvas again in this area so now we go back to wall and let's go for curved reception area something like that again just to show you um, the theory of how you use design options to look at and explore these different permutations so go back let's stick a, a door in there so you can see now we can readily flick between option one and option two. Let's go ahead and explore the small extension to the back. So again, all we need to do now is go down in this option set, rear extension. Let's look at option one. Let's get an external wall type, make it a little bit more realistic. Notice how the walls will still interface with walls in the main model even though they're on an option set so let's say there's one option for our rear extension let's swap that out option two so hopefully you get the gist of this so i'm just doing it with walls but furniture roofs um any element in revit really where you want to explore different permutations different options what you do not want to be doing is what you would do in say AutoCAD is to take this base plan make a copy move it to one side and then alter it accordingly absolutely no need to do that so you can work with a single model use design options to explore these different permutations and I'll show you towards the end of this unit how once you've chosen your preferred option you can automatically unify that option back into the main model and jettison all the unused options. So for now we've just created two options for each of our option sets. At this point I will just mention this primary option here. So primary, one of, one of the options in each option set has to be primary. You can actually go and change which one you want to be primary. But basically the primary option, whichever one it is that you select, is the one that will be accepted back into the main model. If you like, it's your preferred option at any point. So while you're still evaluating your different options, um, it doesn't really matter which one set as primary. But when you're ready to accept uh, an option and to, if you like, collapse the option set back and integrate this back with the main model, you need to make sure that the option you want to keep is set as primary. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. 
So we've just created two options for each of the option sets. You can see this is still left on option one for the rear extension, hence the main model is greyed out, but we do have access to the elements in that option. If I switch back to main model from the little option uh, selector here, the main model becomes accessible again, it's no longer greyed out. And notice how when you switch back to main model, the options in each of the option sets that you have selected as primary, those are the ones that are displayed because basically you're telling Revit those are your preferred options at this point in time. So if, for example, we're happy with the rear extension there, we think the client's going to go with that one, but we'll, we'll keep both options available at the moment but we think the client will probably prefer the other option, the curved reception area. We need to make that other option the primary option in that option set. So all we need to do is bring up the design options box again. Remember the little icon at the bottom. So reception, option two we're saying should be the primary option, the more preferred one at this point. So highlight option two and there's a button there, make primary. It's warning you that it's going to delete things like the um, the door tags. So delete and make primary. Let's get rid of that warning. Close the box. So now with the main model selected, we have our preferred options in each of our option sets. Okay, so we've got a design meeting arranged and we want to sit down with the client and we want to put a drawing in front of them that actually shows them the various options so they can go and make a choice and we can continue and develop the scheme from there on. So let's look at how we do that. So let's concentrate on the reception area, exactly the same principle for the other design option up here, but we'll just do one for now. So what I'm going to do is right click duplicate. So I'm going to rename that, um, let's call that reception A for reception option A, hit OK. I'm going to crop that view. So there is option A for the reception area. Now if I right click and I duplicate again and we rename that I'm going to call that reception B for option B. Now at the moment both these cropped plan views are showing the same option for this option set. So we need a way of setting on a per view basis which option is actually displayed for each option set. So we can do that by hitting VV or VG whichever it brings up the same visibility and graphics overrides. Now we looked at this panel in detail earlier on in the course and I did mention then that you would see different tabs along the top depending on what features you had enabled. Design options is a good example of that. So now we're actually using design options we get an extra tab here, design options. So just put that away for a second. Let's start with option A. Just bring back that visibility and graphics panel. Go back to design options. So here are your option sets listed. So for reception, it's currently defaulting to automatic, which means it's going to display whatever you've got selected as the primary option. But you can override that. So let's hit the little drop down and say for option A, we actually want to display option one. OK that. And there we have option one. And go to the second one, option B. Bring up the visibility and graphics override. Now we can just leave that on automatic because it is displaying the option we want or just for completeness. Hit the drop down there and switch to option two. The advantage of selecting which option you want in there and overriding the primary is that if we do go and change our mind over which option is actually primary, at least it will still display the same actual option in each of these two different views. So we've now just created two crop views showing each of our options for that particular area and we can simply just place those onto a, a title block sheet, print it out and take that to our design team meeting. 
So we've had our meeting with the client and much to our amazement, the client actually wants to go with the opposite options for the ones that we thought that they would choose. So that's not a problem. Uh, we're ready to proceed. The client has given us an instruction, authorized us to proceed on the options that they want. So what we need to do now is go and change the primary options. So bring up the design options box again. So they actually want to go with option one for the reception. So select option one, make primary, delete and make primary. We get that warning box again. So that is the option they want to go with for the reception area and the rear extension. They actually want to go with option two. So select option two, make primary. Again, you get some warning boxes about the tags and close that. So there is the scheme that the client would like to proceed with. All we need to do now is bring back up that design options box and highlight the first option set reception. And in the option set panel here, we have the button to accept primary. That means it's going to take whatever elements are in the primary option set, in this case now option one, and incorporate them back into the main model. So there will no longer be options or an option set for the reception area. So let's accept the primary option one. You do get a warning, so it's gonna jettison all the other options. Are you sure you want to do that? Yes. Delete that there, because there was a view that referenced another option. So we don't need that anymore. And rear extension, likewise, we're sure we want to go with option two. So we make sure that's the primary, the one that the client wants, except primary. Again, that same warning and hit close. And just before I do that, just to show you, we're back to where we started at the start of this unit, i.e. a blank panel here. We have no option sets, we have no options, but we do have a model with the areas developed in accordance with the client's wishes. So that's how you use design options to explore different permutations, present them to the client, and then accept those preferred options and consolidate it back into one model and proceed. Now, you don't have to take that final step. If the client's a little bit undecided, or you think there's maybe a chance that they might want to revisit some of those other options, you can just leave design options set up and just set your views to display the preferred primary ones. Obviously, they'll take up a little bit more um, memory or space in the, in the project file for those elements. Um, it's neater if you can jettison them and consolidate your model. You may want to do that for archiving purposes when the, the project sort of finished and signed off. Um, but in essence, that's how design options work. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.